Hi, in today's lesson we are going to talk about the contracts menu in the Staff Room program. The contract menu is the default menu when you start up the program or alternatively you can click on the second tab across which says contracts. Under the contracts menu we will see a variety of icons and we'll discuss each of those icons independently. The first icon is to create a new contract. If you click on that icon, it will start a new contract for you. The first thing is to give that contract a reference. Now the most important thing with that reference it is it must be unique. You can use whatever you want. Some people run an internal quote number and they would then use a sequential quote number. Alternatively, Let's say I am doing a contract for FNB. I can call that contract simply FNB. But what I suggest you do is you add a number, for example, FNB01. Because if I do a second or third contract for FNB, I can't call that next contract FNB as well. I can then use my tab key to jump across to the name field. And then I can say FNB, let's call it phase one. The name that you give the contract here is what you are going to use to search for that contract in the future. Then the contract will default to the current date. It will also default to revision number one and a status of queue. And that status of queue means that I'm in a quoting stage on that contract. The next field is the default wind load. Now there is a lecture on wind load basics that you can go to if you want to understand how to choose the correct wind load. But you can drop down this list and you can specify the default wind load for this particular contract that you're doing. So I'm going to choose 1500 pascals. I then can choose the default finish. Now although the program allows you to choose different color inserts, different color beads, different color frames, Typically, you would still have a default finish on an entire contract. And instead of specifying the color for every new frame you create, this will be the default color that it will pick up. I can use the small arrow to drop down a list of different colors. Or alternatively, I can use the button with a search. Let's say I'm looking for stone gray. Then it will call up the different codes for that stone gray. All right, and then I would be able to choose that as my default finish. Are you sure you wish to use this as your default finish? Yes. And this entire job would then be done in Matt Stone Gray. Remember what I said in the introduction to profiles, components, finishes, and glazing? It's important that you use the correct code corresponding to the finish that your CDP carries for that particular color. Then I can put an optional quote header. I can put who the estimator, so I'm just going to put my initials under estimator. Then I've got a general quote comment. So if there's just a quote that I want to put on that comment, I can fill in that quote there. My next step is to choose either coastal or inland. All right, I'm going to say that I'm based inland on this project. And that is the basic information that I need to fill in. Then I have this following section, which is for notes. Any general notes, I'm just going to put in garbage there for now. You can type in whatever notes you want about that project, and it will store those notes against that product. Then I have my contract history. This contract history automatically populates for you. So I can see on the 8th of the 4th that quote was created. <coughs> Every time I cross that quote, We'll do something on that quote, it will record it under the quote history. And then I have my defaults that I'm going to use for that quote. Now, we will have a separate video on defaults, so I'm not going to go into those defaults at the moment. So that is the initial step of setting up a contract, and I'm now ready to go in and actually do the design. Once again, the design will be covered by a separate video, so I'm not going to do the design at the moment. I'm just going to go through the process of 
creating contracts and accessing contracts. If at any stage I choose to close that contract, that contract now is saved and I will see my normal background back on my screen. All right, so that is this process to create a new contract. If I want to open an existing contract, I can use that second icon. When I click on that second icon, you will notice that these contracts are sorted in date order with the most recent being at the top. So normally the contracts that you need are the ones which are nearer the top of the list. So there was my FNB contract and I can just double click on that contract to open it. All right. Alternatively, if I am wanting to search for something, let's say I'm looking for something I did for a bank. And I type in the word bank, the only thing it finds is Funder Bank, and I can open that particular contract. Okay, so you can easily access an existing contract that you've done on the system based on a search on either that code that you use to create that contract or the name that you use to create that contract. Once you have a contract open on the screen and I wish to close it, you can use that third icon along, which is just close that contract. You do not have to close a contract before you open another one. If I'm busy with this contract and I want to open a new contract, I can simply click on the open button uh, say so that is my contract there, double click on it and I will access that contract. All right, but the closed contract will just save everything and put you back on your default screen. The next option is if I want to physically delete a contract. All right, so I am going to specify here a reference, a name or manually select a contract. So let's just go and remove this FNB contract that I created. So I can select that contract. If you see here written in bold, it says hold control to multi-select. So if I choose more than one, let's say I want to remove those three contracts of my machine. I can use the control key, multi-select them, and then click on the OK button. I you sure wish to delete these contracts? Yes. And now it will go through and it will delete all three of those contracts. Please just be warned that depending on the amount of data on your computer, you can have a situation where to delete the contracts takes quite a lot of time because it needs to go and clear out all of the files associated with those contracts. Okay, and then it will come up with a message that your contracts have been successfully deleted and you can say okay. Now if I go to open, you'll notice that FNB is missing, that one that said bank was missing, and I'm sitting with a few other contracts here. Alright, so that is the delete contract button. The next button is copy contract. Now this is very useful if you have produced a quotation, and let's say someone asks you for a similar quote, but with certain items removed, or with a different finish, or with a different glazing option, so you can take an existing contract, says which contract do you want to copy? So you use the button with the three dots, dots to select your contract. So let's say I'm going to select that contract and the new contract reference I want to do, I'm going to give it the same number, 281624 and I'm just going to put an A on that. And I say copy and now it will make a full copy of that contract. Now I can open that contract, okay, because now the new contract will have today's date on it. Okay, so there it is A, and I can manipulate this contract as I wish. Notice that under the contract his history, it will state there that the quote was copied from and the contract reference. So it keeps track of, of what you have done as well. Let's close that contract. The other option you can do is you can actually merge contracts. Now the purpose of merging a contract would be to take two contracts and merge them together into a single contract. Very often this is going to be used if you want to get better material optimization. 
So let's assume I've got two small contracts that are done in SWIFT 28 system. They're both in white powder coating. And now I want to actually cut that material and I want to optimize that material against across both the jobs. That's a use for the merge contract facility. So what it says to you is choose the first contract. So I'm going to just choose that first one there. Choose your second contract. I will choose a different contract. So now I've got two different contracts and I'm just going to put them into a contract called Merge 01 and I click on the Merge button. Now those contracts have successfully been merged. If I now go to my open contract, I will see I've got a contract called Merge 01. Okay. And the way the program actually works is that it will... D1 was the reference that was in the original contract and then it will put this tilde 1 which means that that came from contract number 1. Okay, and though there was also D1 which came from contract number 2. So it doesn't matter if I have a situation that I have two contracts with duplicate references once I merge them, the program will automatically add the tilde 1 or tilde 2 according to which contract it came from and therefore create a unique name for each reference. Alright, so that is the, the merge contract. The next option is to save a contract. It will tell you you need to have that contract open first. So let me open my contract called Merge01. And now I can choose the option to save that contract. So let's say for argument's sake, I wish to now take this contract. I've been working on my computer at the office and I now want to take this contract and go and work on my computer at home. I can use the save option, uh, select my flash drive. My flash drive here is called Creelco and I can save that contract onto the flash drive. It tells me one contract will be saved and then it goes through the process of saving that contract. Contract save to disk. Okay. Now what happens is if I remove my flash stick from my machine, I can take this flash stick now with me home, take this flash stick, pop it into my computer at home. I need to open it here. And let's just close this contract. Now I'm on my computer at home, I use the load button. I navigate to my flash stick. There will be the contract which was created on the 8th of the 4th, 2020, and I can just say load that contract. And it will put that contract on back onto my machine. So that's the save and the load. Then just for convenience, uh, while you're working in the contract menu, you've got a quick access to your cutting list. Your cutting list is something that you do on a regular basis. So while I'm busy working on my contract, instead of having to jump out and go to the reports menu and then print a cutting list each time, I can just access my cutting list directly from my contracts menu. And then finally, I've got a link to the support. Now this support button has got all of your support details. Okay, it's got an email for help, for help on registering your staff rent or you can click the, on that button to register your staff rent. Uh, if you have a problem with cutting lists or technical information on the aluminium systems, there's a phone number you can contact at the speaker. Um, problems with staff rent, there's a telephone number for Stargate, an email address for your support. Please notice that the quickest way for you to get support is if you email your team viewer ID and password directly to support at Stargate. There are always people monitoring that email address and they will use team viewer, will log on and will sort out your computer for you. Um, if you've got questions regarding staff and training, here are the contact details. Natasha looks after the staff and training. If you do not have team viewer installed on your computer, you can use this link at the bottom, click here to download TeamViewer if you don't have it. Click on that link, it will then open up your uh, Windows Explorer and you will have an option there to download TeamViewer. Um, 
short and sweet for today, but it's important for you to understand what the capabilities are on working with a contract. Um, tomorrow we will look at the configuration menu and how to set up Starfront correctly for your business. Once again, thank you for your time in watching this video. Please stay safe, stay happy, and we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.